Hey friends, Greg here with the Pennywise guys. I want to show you a rooftop solar system that we installed on a church and the products that we used to save a lot of time and money. You're going to really want to see the new product that's out there that can save you some time on your solar installations. Let's get started. All right, we're putting the mounts down. These are the quick bolt deck mounts that don't have to find a rafter. They can go anywhere on the sheet. Uh, works out really well labor wise is so much faster I'm going to show you uh, two maps here lots of traffic streets of traffic we can go ahead and um, we've got these laid out at six foot uh, spacing on the mounts go ahead and flip it up where we got that in place we're going to go ahead and put a generous speed of roof sealant or uh, this is a um, cam link sealant Now uh, we're going to get a close-up view on the next one so you can see it. Let's get a really good bead of a sealant on there. And that's all. It's, uh, it's got a rubber pad on it. These mounts are really good. Uh, we've used their competitors' mount. A lot, little bit more trouble with those. These are really nice. So I recommend the quick bolt deck mount lid. Um, solar mounts. Okay, since I already have the spacing on that, just flip it back in place. I use an impact, they tell you to use a drill, but if you don't overdo it, you're good. I get the first one started, so it won't move. Line it up. Go ahead and get the all four bolts put in. I'll show you these a little closer here on the next mount. You can see the details of the bolts. And I'll show you what they're like. Okay, I didn't get enough sealant on there, so I'm just going to put a little bead around the outside here. Listen. There we go. Just to be sure, I got a bead on the inside here, but I like to get it on the outside. So I put a, a big enough bead. It'll squish it out, then you have a. Um, and then you got it. Okay, and I just wipe that up. And we're done. It's that quick. You don't have to find the rafter so much quicker. Alright, we're going to show you how to put in T bolts on the rails real quick. See that little slot on the end? That's got to go vertical. So Jeremy's going to show you how to get, get these in there. Go through there, line it up with a slot. Rotate it, get that slot pointing up, put the nut on, it's that easy. So these, these T-bolts are great to have. And we're just going to snug them up for right now because we've got to make some adjustments. If you take a look, we've got them all in. We've got all the rails in the up position, but now we're going to eyeball and lower the rails where we need to because the roof is really wavy and so we're going to try to get it as, as straight as we can a little bit of uh, this way out of alignment don't worry about it. the panels covered up you're not you're not going to see it but up and down you'll see so we're going to now go ahead and lower and uh, mount uh, areas where we can to get as best we can this roof is really uh, wavy all right, we got all the rails uh, leveled off as best we can. We're laying the inverter cabling out. Inverters are going to go next. Uh, just kind of give you an idea of what we do here. Always leave about six inches of minimum of extra material uh, for um, reason being your splices sometimes like right here end up right next to the mount. Okay, and so then we're, we're limited on the adjustment. So if you have extra material both ends, we'll end up trimming those off as we go. I went with five lengths of the 166 long, inch long um, rails. And then with the butt connectors, we just left the two and a half inch gap there. You can do that, tighten those T-nuts down really good, and you can do that. That way it saves me from buying extra rails and saves some money. So we did that down the line and we marked out 
where the um, panels were going to go and found out the panel mount was going to go right there so I had extra mount material cut a little piece dropped it in there so then the mount then mounts to that 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 can slide back and forth it's fine that mount then will mount on there and we did that on three of the rails the other ones were fine okay these roof mounts the quick bolt deck mounts are phenomenal save so much time I highly recommend them I'll show you the uh, the link below for that mater those mounts and uh, I just really highly recommend them also the inverters the chillicon power inverters love them highly recommend them okay on leveling these uh, I just laid down on each rail looked down with my eyeball down the end of each rail we already had them up all the way when we secured them so then I just told my partner lower that one there lower that one there until we got it pretty level across a little waviness side to side is okay the roof started out pretty level and by the time they got up here they got a little wavy that's okay you're not going to see that it, it's fine the up and down um, is what you're going to see with the panels and how they, they they meet up trick i use a half inch pvc cut to length of, and width of the panel so the length we can use to space the railings apart okay it's just a nice little quick tool to have and then the width of the panel I use that PVC and mark it out so we have these marks that's where the, the panel is going to start not here but here and we mark we just lay it out and put the 11 16 gap in between where the mounts go and so we just jog it down the line with the the mark and the gaps in between and you know exactly where your panels are going to lay so that way you know if you're going to land on a, a spot like this, you'll need to put that little spacer in like I showed you down below. This one, the one goes past it, not a problem. Okay, um, so we're going to go ahead and get these inverters laid out. I'm going to go ahead and seal up any cracks. This is a pretty old roof. They may have 10, 15, 20 years of life left on, on this roof. I'm going to recommend to the church here to use the elastic Merrick paint that paints comp roofs you can choose nice colors they have colors you can choose and paint around the system and I'm gonna go ahead and seal up any cracks and lifted uh, tabs on the shingles and I'm gonna seal them up with some cocky or roof, roof sealant okay and that way it will be sealed from underneath and they can paint around it later to protect the rest of the roof the Sun's not gonna expose the this existing roof but once the solar's down you won't get any more weathering with the sun on that so it'll be good to go cheap way to to fix a roof is look into the paints they really come a long way with that and you can get some nice colors and you can actually do it for the fraction of the cost of re-roofing your your uh, your building all right we're gonna go ahead and lay the, the inverters out and we'll go from there all right we're making progress and getting the panels put up i just wanted to show you a few things here to reminder the the pedestals are about as wide as the, the shingle tabs. That's why we really didn't strike a, a, um, a chalk line because it's it really wouldn't do any good. You don't want that uh, that pedestal foot to go off the edge of the shingle, and so you really don't have but maybe a half inch or less than that uh, back and forth. So that's why the rails were a little bit uh, wavy back and forth. But as you can see, that doesn't matter. The adjustments are more important to get uh, vertical adjustments so these uh, these bolts right here only can go up so much so we, we start all the way up and then we lower uh, a little bit here and there this roof is really wavy so our best friend for this project has been uh, the door shims the plastic door shims if you don't know what they are either the wooden door shims they're wedged about six inches long tapered shim that are for, they're called door shims well, now they got the plastic ones that you know, they're they're um, they easily uh break it you don't have to cut them they just snap they snap you fit them underneath that edge of the panel if you have to raise it because that that uh, pedestal doesn't go any higher if you have to raise it uh those shims are a quarter inch down to about 16th it tapers down so you can get the exact um height you want snap it off if you need to tape it in place so it doesn't move 
but once it's uh, clamped down onto the shim uh, at, against that rail, it's not going to move. So we had to do that a number of times and we've got really good vertical um, alignment. Side to side, these rails will flex back and forth, you know, plus or minus a quarter inch or more. So if you got a wavy uh, roof with the uh, roofer that did the, uh, the shingles here, don't sweat it. Just line it up with the uh, as best you can. Don't worry about it going back and forth a quarter inch. It will, the rails will flex when you bolt them up, okay? The other thing is that I want to uh, emphasize the uh, Chilicon power, and uh, now it's been bought up by Generac. They are the best microinverter on the market. You are not going to find a better one. I really love these guys. They're, they work wonderfully. They don't clip the, uh, the top end of the power. So if you've got these 450 watt panels, which these are on a end phase inverter or something like that. The end phase is going to clip the top end of the power during peak production. The Chilicon power, now bought up by Generac, a good company, these don't clip that power. So you need to produce more energy and they're about the same cost. So just really plug these inverters highly. Okay, um, we did the cabling across. We have our J boxes. We have 16 panels with these inverters here. Each of these inverters, it's the CP720. It's one inverter with two panels per inverter. So we have 60 panels total. We have 30 inverters. So we have, you can only put with 450 watt panels, you can put only a maximum of 16 panels per string. So right here is 16 panels and we have on this side of it, there's a, there's a, a J box where we have the liquid tight for that circuit runs down to the solar deck and I'll show you that in a minute. After this is four, the other four panels. So we have 16 and four. We have three rows of 20 and the, there's two strings per row, 16 and four. So we have our second J box down here and we have our liquid tight. We love half, half inch liquid tight. It, goes against the rails real nice you strap it up you can't even see it and then uh, go into a this is called a sola deck these things are great low profile junction box you drill one hole in the middle there down through the roof and you pull your Romex through you do all your wiring right there and you take that cover and cover it up and it's really low profile normally you would flash these under the shingles the top edge here would be flashed under the shingles, but these shingles are so poor condition, um, I can't do that without just breaking, snapping them off. So I put the roofing sealant, a big, huge half inch bead all the way around, screwed it down with four lag bolts, okay, and then I came back and uh, sealed all the edges to make sure down to here past that point it's no big deal because the rain will run off okay and so then once you're done here this lid then pops on there like that okay and that's what's called a solo deck okay great great device only about 60 bucks is worth it okay we're finishing up the wiring here we're about ready to put the other 15 panels down and we're completed other than the uh Electrical panel work, which we're going to do a line side tap on this job. I'm going to show you how to do that on a 400 amp panel. So we have a line side tap, 400 amp panel. We're setting the sub panel of 125 amp sub panel. So I'll show you all that as well. So let me get you another view here. Okay. So all the cabling, the liquid tight, and we're wiring up the boxes there, getting that one finished up. We're good to go. All right, so also when you do the DC wires, okay, I'm going to show you this here. You, you take the DC wires which are in the middle on these split phase panels. Wiring that comes off the end, it's so much easier to get it hooked to the rails so it won't sag. But when you have a split phase, it comes from the middle, the positive and negative, and what you do is be creative. We see how he looped it here so it didn't have so much length. 
zip tied it to the rail so that's nice and tight this one's brought over they're probably zip tied together underneath there to keep it tight be creative use the rail the rail to zip tie put loops in the wire to get rather extra slack on the on the shorter end one because this one comes off of this side here and this one comes off of that side over there so this one is probably stretched tight this one has got extra length and just put a loop in it so lots of zip ties be creative keep those wires off off the, the roof it looks so much nicer to have them up nice and tight against the bottom of the panel all right other than that just take your time and uh, key on this when you're running a, a long run like this run maybe four, four or five panels on the first row and make sure you get your alignment to the roof line I have this two inches away from the roof you can't see it so I'm not gonna step out that far I wanted it this close because I'm putting a washing system for this panel automatic washing system look for the videos for my washing systems they're great you don't have to get up and wash the panels they have a soap cycle and a rinse cycle it's all automated just turn the turn the valve I show you how to build those but since I'm having a washing system I wanted this array down close to the ridge because I'm gonna put the um, the washing manifold on the fascia so I have five foot at the top but that's fine but you want to get your alignment right get those first four panels in place double check triple check eyeball down the end along the fascia and do an eyeball check and then if you're getting a little bit off you can always flare them down a 16th or up a 16th and just adjust it a little bit to get it to go up or down so make sure that first row is really straight then the rest of them just lay right in line okay and also leave about three inches of rail on either side of your array cut back and back when you're done come back and cut them off so much easier than trying to figure out exact length you're never going to get it so leave at least three inches on either side if a little bit more if you're not comfortable with it and then come back and trim them off when you're all done all right we'll go ahead and finish this up and i'll show you the end results all right a couple things i forgot to mention each of these uh, inverters have a serial number and they put a sticker on there that you need to pull off before you put your panels down do not forget to pull those off and take a piece of paper label north south east west and to orient your array and just kind of lay those stickers out the way your array goes so when you set up your monitoring you know how to set up the monitoring with the array showing each inverter where it's at life is so much easier if you'll remember to pull off the little sticker it's uh, and stick it to a piece of paper another little trick instead of spending the money to buy the end um, on the start the, the uh, end cap this is the start of the cable you know instead of buying it I just take in silicone the end of it to seal it and that's all you need to do instead of spending a few bucks on each of those you don't need to all right so don't forget the stickers here's one piece of equipment you might want to think about getting i got a single man lift upright i bought it used and then i took the man basket off and welded on some forks uh, we can lift um, anywhere for up to six panels depends on the size and if you change the governor on the uh, pump, you can actually go a little bit more. I just need to do that, but six panels for us at a time is good. This goes up to 32 feet high. So think about that. Get yourself a single man upright or any brand single man lift. I think I paid 900 bucks for that thing used, and it's been working great for years and years. All right, that just saves us a lot of trouble getting, especially uh, two-story buildings, getting the panels up on the top okay we're all completed i tell you those quick bolt deck mounts saved us about 25 to 30 hours of time putting the system up we're going to go ahead and do a line side tap on this 400 amp panel for the solar system i ran the 125 amp sub panel outside the wall here put a hole through the back of the panel and fed it through did the uh, pre did the uh, pipe work with the inch and a quarter PVC pipe and it penetrates the cabinet wall here down to where we're going to do the line side tap down below uh, We're going to do that later here. It's all completed Check it out Looks pretty good. Let me show you how we did all the hookups here. 
on the electrical. Up above there is a J-Box, plastic J-Box 6x6. We ran the uh, 8.3 Romex from the three arrays, so there's three sets of Romex to that box. Then I ran number eight wire to tie into those three sets down the inch and a quarter conduit into a 125 amp sub panel where I have my three uh, 40 amp breakers uh, for each of the arrays. And from there, uh, a blade disconnect. Okay, so uh, going from the sub panel to the disconnect is uh, one out wire and uh, the disconnect goes straight through the wall into where we did the line side tap. You saw that, uh, that LB on the inside of that wall. That's right behind that disconnect. Everything is uh, hooked up, looks really nice. Decals are on, past inspection, we're good to go. System's working great. So there you go. Have a blessed day. I sure hope you enjoyed this video and it was a help to you. Please like, subscribe, and share. Also hit that notification bell to be notified of weekly videos. I pray that you are blessed and that you know him who is the author of life.